Google Finance. How to use the stock screener. There are over 8,000 stocks traded on the US market. This is simply too much information to digest. However, we must do research before committing our money. We can't research the entire market, so we must select a few likely opportunities. How do we select stocks for research? We must have selection criteria. Some criteria has a positive connotation, like a high rate of earnings growth. Other criteria is negative, such as a high ratio of debt to equity. Some selection criteria may be neutral, without much significance, such as the dollar amount of a dividend. Finally, for certain screening purposes, some criteria may be irrelevant. For example, the current dollar value of a share. Google Finance has an easy-to-use criteria control on the stock screener. On the left is the name of the criteria, in this case, market cap. Next to the name is a button with a pop-up definition of the criteria. On the right, there's a button to remove the criteria from the screen. There is a field in which to type the maximum value of a criteria. And also, the minimum value. The distribution of companies for this criteria is shown as a vertical bar graph. The taller the bar, the more companies with that particular value. To read, or set, a value, you can use the maximum and minimum sliders. Let's see the criteria control in action. First, we'll try adjusting the criteria sliders. You'll note that as we move the sliders, the values in the entry field change. This provides an idea of the range of permissible values. Then, it's usually preferable to type in the maximum and minimum value that we wish to set. To get an idea of how the distribution chart works, let's choose various economic sectors from the drop-down list. You note that, as we change sectors, the bar graphs also change. Sometimes, the values are widely dispersed. Other times, the range of values are lumped together. Usually, we won't want to use more than three or four criteria in setting up a screen. As we add criteria, we reduce the number of results. With too many criteria, we get no results at all. The purpose of the stock screener is not to select the perfect stock. Instead, the idea is to create a smaller list from which we will proceed to do further research. As we move the sliders, the output screen changes immediately. The number of stocks in the output screen is shown in the upper left. In this case, there are 3,275 stocks in the output screen. As we narrow the criteria, the number of stocks selected is reduced. Note how quickly the output changes. In this case, we end up with only one stock selected. The 
Google screener generates a list of stocks, as you move the sliders. However, this list is temporary. When you move away from the page, your criteria will be reset. The output will be lost. It's easy to save a screener page. Once the page is saved, you can return to it, anytime. To save a screen, use the bookmark on your browser. Give a name to your bookmark. To reopen a screen, use the bookmark. Setting up a stock screen is the first step in deciding which stocks you should buy or hold. Research is a process of successive winnowing. You discard stocks as you learn more about them. The Google Screener produces a fixed list. There is no way to remove stocks from this list. What you need is a permanent list that you can edit. To do this, you may use the Portfolio tool. Create a named portfolio to hold stocks that you are researching. Select stocks from your screen to transfer to your research portfolio. Then, as your research proceeds, remove stocks that don't measure up. The stock screener has more than 50 selection criteria. Two drop-down lists allow you to select stocks by exchange or economic sector. Four default criteria appear when the stock screener starts up. To remove a criteria, click the box at the right end. There are the links for restoring the default criteria and for adding new criteria. The new criteria link opens a panel with access to dozens of additional criteria. These additional criteria are organized in nine groups. Click on a group. A panel opens, listing additional criteria. Click on the criteria. A panel displays the definition and an Add Criteria button. Click the Add Criteria button and the criteria is added to your active criteria display. Let's browse through some of the criteria available. Some criteria are useful only for certain types of investor. None of the criteria is a perfect measure of the value of a stock. How to use these criteria is the subject for another video. Having bookmarked and named your stock screen, the next step is to set up a research portfolio. A research portfolio is a more permanent registry of your stock research project. By placing stocks in a research portfolio, you can use over 30 measures of comparison while following the latest news about the stocks you're studying. To set up a research portfolio, click on the Portfolio tab in the left sidebar. The My Portfolio page will open. Click on the Create a New Portfolio link in the upper right corner. Enter the name of your new portfolio. In this case, let's call our new portfolio Research.
next step is to move stocks from the stock screen to the research portfolio. Let's set up a simple stock screen to show how this works. The stock at the top of the list is First Constitution Bancorp. To open the stock page in a separate tab, we'll control click the link. This way, the stock screen remains open so that we may return. On the stock page, we have much more information on that stock. The stock screen is only a preliminary selection. Many stocks in the screen will be quickly eliminated by glancing over more detailed information on the stock page. If it seems like a stock is worth further study, click the Watch This Stock link at the top of the page. Next, on the page that opens, add the stock to your research portfolio. Here we see that First Constitution Bancorp has been added to our research portfolio. Click the tab to return to the stock screen and repeat this process for all stocks in the screen. If you don't want to include a stock in the research portfolio, just return to the screen and go to the next stock on the list. Full due diligence research is a lengthy process. By combining computer screening with a quick, human screening, we effectively narrow our research project down to the most likely candidates. Let's sum up. Google Screen is just the first step in selecting investments. You can use it to narrow down a selection of stocks coming up with a smaller number for further study. You should place those stocks that you think merit investigation in your research portfolio. As your investigation proceeds, you can remove stocks that you do not like. For more about Google Screen, click on the link just below this video. This is the second in a series about Google Finance prepared by Capital Flow Watch. Thanks for watching.